last session we have seen fertilization taking place, formation of the zygote and formation of the endosperm. The zygote was formed by fusion of the male and the female gamete. So that was a diploid cell. The endosperm was formed by the fusion of male gamete with the primary endospermic nucleus or the secondary nucleus which was in the central cell. The endosperm that resulted was triploid. Now we shall see what happens further to the embryo, the development of the embryo. The process which describes development of the embryo in its different stages is called as embryogeny. So that means embryogeny is the formation of the embryo. Let us see how the process goes on in dicotyledons and monocotyledons. First, let us talk about dicots. As you can see in the diagram, the zygote formed is diploid. Now, this diploid zygote in dicots will elongate. After elongation, it undergoes a transverse division. That means there is formation of a transverse wall so that the zygote now gets divided into two cells. These are two unequal cells, the larger one and the smaller one. So it divides transversely and forms two cells. The larger one is called as the suspensor cell and the smaller one is called as the embryo cell. The suspensor cell is towards the micropylar end and the embryo cell is towards the chalazal end or towards the antipodal cells. Now this suspensor cell will undergo further division so that it forms 6 to 10 cells. These 6 to 10 cells will be in the form of a filament. This will be again called as suspensor. So this filamentous suspensor will help to push the embryo into the endosperm so that it can derive its nourishment from there. What happens further to the suspensor is the topmost cell of the suspensor, it swells up. After swelling up, it is called as the hostorium. So, hostorium is the first cell of the suspensor. Now, the last cell of the suspensor means the cell which is adjacent to the embryo cell is called as hypophysis. This hypophysis will later on form the radical and the root cap. The radical further goes on, to, goes on to form the root. Now coming to the embryo cell. The embryo cell further divides. You can have a look in the diagram. It divides transversely again. Now the embryo cell undergoes two vertical divisions. and it forms four cells. Now these four cells, the stage is called as the quadrant stage. After two vertical division, these four cells will undergo one transverse division. So now the quadrant divides transversely and it forms eight cells. This eight cell stage is called as the octant stage. Now here at the octant stage, the embryo is globular. Now, the octant stage will again divide and form 16 cell stage. Now at 16 cell stage, they divide periclinally so that an outer layer is formed. These will further divide and form an outer layer. This outer layer is called as the protoderm. or dermatogen. This is the outer layer. There is also an inner mass of cells. The inner mass of cells will divide and they will form the procambium as you can see in the diagram there. The procambium will further go on to form with development the vascular strand. It will form the procambium and the ground meristem. The 
the ground meristem stem with the development of the embryo will form the cortex and the pit. Here the dermatogen with further development of embryo will form the epidermis. Now by the time the embryo develops completely that means the embryo is fully developed in dicots when it has two cotyledons plus the radical and the plumule. When it comes to this stage, the embryo becomes heart shaped. Till the 16 cell stage, it was globular in shape, but by the time the embryo is completely developed, it becomes heart shaped. So, this was about development of embryo in dicotyledons or embryogeny taking place in dicotyledons. Let us now look at the structure of the embryo in dicots. Now, the path of the embryonal axis, that means the axis of the embryo above the cotyledons, the part of the embryonal axis above the cotyledons is called as epiblast. And the part of the embryonal axis below that is called as hypoblast. Coming to the structure of the embryo in dicotyledons. When the embryo was at 8 cell stage, these 8 cells were arranged in 2 tires. That means in 2 layers of 4 each. The upper one was called as the epibasal layer. And the inner one was called as the hypobasal layer. The hypobasal would go on to form the hypocotyle. And the epibasal would go on to form the plumule and the cotyledons. Now the part of the embryonal axis above the cotyledons is called as epicotyle. This epicotyle ends in plumule. The plumule will further go on to form the shoot tip. And the part of the embryonal axis below the cotyledon is called as the hypocotyle. The hypocotyle ends in radical and root cap. Epicotyle ending in plumule. So this is how development and structure of the embryo is in dicotyledons. Now we come to development and structure in monocots. In monocotyledons, again the zygote is deployed cell. The, zyg the zygote gets elongated and it divides transversely into two cells. So the zygote again divides into two cells called as the basal cell and the terminal cell. Now this basal cell, it will swell up and it will go on to form the suspensor. And it is the suspensor which will function as the hostorium. The terminal cell will now divide into two by a transverse division. So this divides. And it forms two cells, one is called as the top cell and the other is the middle cell. The middle cell will further go on and develop into hypocotyle and the radical. And the other cell of the terminal cell that means and the primule. This is how embryogeny takes place in monocots. Now coming to the structure of the embryo in monocots. Structure again, the part of the embryonal axis above the cotyledon is the epicotyle and the part below is the 
hypocotyl. Here in monocots, the cotyledon is called as scutellum. This lies lateral to the embryonal axis. such that the plumule comes to lie in a depression. There is a depressed area wherein the plumule is present. Now the epicotyle again ends up in radical. The radical and the root cap, radical and the root cap are covered by a protective sheath. This sheath is called as coleoriza. And the primule, that is where the hypocotyle ends, is covered by a layer which is called as coleoptile. So here we have one single cotyledon in monocots, which is called a scrutulum. The primule, which is covered by the coleoptile, the radical and the root cap, which is covered by coleoriza. So this was about the structure of the embryo in monocots and in dicotyledons. Now let us see how the seed develops further. So development of the seed and formation of fruit. As the embryo grows, it derives its nutrition from the endosperm in most of the seeds. So the central part of the endosperm is eaten up and it, this endosperm now erodes onto the new cells. In some seeds, the endosperm which is not used up but is present when the embryo develops into the fruit, these seeds are called as endospermic seeds wherein the endosperm is not used by the embryo. They are also called as albuminous seeds or albuminous fruits and there are certain seeds or fruits wherein the embryo is completely utilized by the embryo. They are called as non-endospermic or ex-albuminous seeds or fruits. The ovary will go on to form the fruit as development takes place. The ovule develops into the seed. Now as the ovary is forming the fruit, the wall of the ovary will form the wall of the fruit. So wall of ovary goes on to form wall of the fruit which is called as pericarp. The integuments of the ovule were protective coverings. Now as the seed is forming, the integuments lose their protoplasm. The seed has just 10 to 15 percent of moisture. Now these integuments dry up further and they form protective coat around the seed. So we saw that the wall of the ovary forms the wall of the fruit. Now the covering of the ovules are the integuments. So there are two integuments. These integuments will then go on to form a protective seed coat. The integuments, they lose their protoplasm, they become slightly dry and thick so that they can be protective layers. So what they form are seed coats. And there are two seed coats, the outer and the inner. The outer seed coat, which is the thick one, is called as the testa and the inner seed coat is called as the tegmen. So this was about the integuments changing into seed coat. Next, the micropyle of the ovule will go on to form the micropyle of the seed. So here the name does not change, it remains the same. Now through this micropyle of the seed, the seed absorbs nutrients 
and wood. So this micropile of the seed has nutritive function. So that was what changes are taking place in the formation of the embryo to the formation of the seed and the fruit. So we have seen what changes have taken place towards seed formation and fruit formation. In certain fruits, floral parts also take part in formation of the fruit. For example, the thalamus of the flower gets converted into the fruit. Like we see in fruits like apple and pear. So here it is a thalamus of the flower which is also taking part in formation of the fruit. In certain fruits, it is only the ovary which forms the fruit directly. Wherein it is only the ovary that forms the fruit, they are called as true fruits. And when even other floral parts are taking part in the formation, those are called as false fruits. There is also another category of fruits which are called as parthenogenetic fruits. These are basically seedless because here the fruit is formed without fertilization taking place. So that was about types of fruits. Now we go on to germination of the seed. Once the seed is formed, it undergoes germination. Now at the end of the stage wherein the embryo has cotyledons, radical and the plumule, it becomes dormant. Now when this dormant seed becomes active, it is called as germination. It undergoes processes which are called as germination. Now germination of seed is of three types. The first is called as epigeal germination. In epigeal germination, the hypocotyl grows rapidly. It grows so rapidly and so much is its growth that cotyledons come to lie above the surface of the soil. Now once the cotyledons come above the surface of the soil, they form leaf-like structures, green structures. Now these green structures will carry out photosynthesis till the seed is viable to thrive on its own. Till the seed becomes capable of thriving on its own, the green cotyledons will carry out photosynthesis. So that is called as epigeal germination. Second type is the hypogeal germination. In hypogeal germination, the epicotyle grows and the plumule comes above the surface of the soil, but the cotyledons remain below the soil surface. So that is called as hypogeal germination. Third is called as vivipari. In vivipari, the germination of the seed is taking place inside the fruit. And this is occurring when the fruit is attached to the parent plant. Now this viviparous mode or vivipari is seen mainly in marshy saline soil. Wherein there is less of oxygen that is available. Here as the germination takes place, the fruit becomes heavier. The seed falls from the parent plant and it grows onto the mud. It develops radical roots and it further develops the plumule and it develops into a new plant completely. But the initial germination is taking place inside the fruit. So that was about the types of germination.